The purpose of Lesson 1 is to introduce your students to the definition of chemistry and then also introduce them to the elements, their names and symbols, that are found on the periodic table. Now we usually don't recommend that you require your students to memorize many of the uh, element names and symbols, but rather through use they begin to pick them up. Now it is a good idea for them to be familiar with many of them, and so the, the game that we have or activity we have uh, designed for Lesson 1 is Element Bingo. It's good that they become familiar and then be able to find them on the periodic table of elements. Now we've taken uh, printed pages uh, straight out of the text here, and this is uh, the student page 5, which is the periodic table of elements and you will go through uh, some of the uh, naming rules of the elements such that they always begin with a capital letter if there's a second letter it's always a lower case and it's important to know uh, for them to know that the there's no alphabetical order on the periodic table uh, at this point they will not see much rhyme or reason why they are placed where they are in subsequent lessons you will definitely begin to find trends of the periodic table and your students will learn why the elements are where they are on the table. Now the activity we said for the first lesson is element bingo. Now on page 6 and page 7 in the student text you'll find these blank element bingo cards and the idea here is for your students to fill out their own bingo card. Now you can begin with one card or you can have your students play two cards. The element bingo card is filled out by having the students write element symbols in each of the squares. Now this is a six by six bingo card so they can have as many as 36 different element symbols on the card. If you refer back to the periodic table of elements you can then tell your students to use the periodic table of elements and copy down element symbols off the periodic table. Now if you've got 36 uh, spaces here you'll want your students to at least go to element 36 which is Krypton but possibly even more than that so if you play a blackout game of bingo you won't have all your students filling their cards all at once. So your students then referring to a periodic table will then fill out their card so the first square is already filled in here with HE for helium and so we can just refer to our chart here we can do a uh, B for boron and then a C for carbon and it doesn't matter your students can place these symbols anywhere they would like on the table and then I'm gonna get an N for nitrogen and then how about an F for fluorine We've got neon is in E. We already got helium there. So I'm going to go on. Here's another example. Li lithium. And your students will fill out their complete card. Now when you're ready to play the bingo, your job will then be to referring to the table or there's another chart there in the teacher's edition that lists the elements. You can begin by calling out an element name and then as a student has that uh, element symbol on their card they just place a marker on their card. Now I've got some little colored chips here tiddlywink type chips uh, that can be placed uh, on on those element symbols so like if you call out neon I look on my card and I find any for neon and we do encourage you to allow your students to have access to look at their periodic tables of elements where it does have the symbol and the and the name on it both together so they're reinforced that yeah 10 is NE neon and I can find neon over here and do give them time to hunt them up when you initially start give them plenty of time to find them and even though we haven't really introduced atomic number yet at this point you can go ahead and show them how the numbers do do go across the atomic numbers do go across and this helps them find them a little faster so you can say well look at number 10 if you're looking for neon and show it show them where it is on the chart so play continues and you'll just keep calling out the symbols 
and eventually a student will get six in a row across, six down, or six in a diagonal uh, on the bingo card, and then they call out bingo. And before you award them the points or whatever you plan to do for a little reward for getting a bingo, ask the student to verify that bingo by telling you the symbol and then the element to which it, which it belongs. So in the case here, if we would have gotten a bingo straight across the top of this card, let me get one more marker here. And for markers, you can use like these uh, colored tips. You can use pennies. You can use buttons. Uh, if you've got a lot of Legos in the house, pass out a lot of Legos. Little, just need something that's that can mark the symbols that are called. So if I got bingo straight across here, uh, before I could earn my point for it, I'd have to say, well, H E is helium, B is boron, F fluorine, N E neon, N nitrogen, and L I lithium. And again allow your student access to that periodic table so you're reinforcing uh, use of the of the elements and symbols. The more times they use them the better off they'll be at recalling them later in the course. Now you can play straight bingo like we said you know six across six down diagonal. Uh, you can play a picture frame where you go around the edge, you can play Texas T, where you go and make a T, you can do an N, you can do I's, you can do different variations, or like we said earlier, you can do a blackout, where the where the, uh, you fill in the whole card with markers, and so you need to make sure you've got plenty of markers on hand when you go to uh, play those versions of the game. Uh, one more variation of this, and is that if you make copies of these bingo cards or if you just make a new set of cards is that you can reverse the process instead of having the students write symbols on the cards have them write names on the cards so they'll fill their card with names and then you will call out symbols and then they find those uh, corresponding names on the bingo card and uh, play again uh, if you're playing this in a classroom you can play team bingo. Uh, you can group your students into groups. And then if anyone on that team wins a bingo, it earns points for that team. Uh, you can play for uh, prizes, little food treats or prizes. Or uh, one thing that a lot of students like if you're where you have to do grades and testing is that students can earn bonus points uh, for their test scores. That can be they, So they can use them later when they take the test over lesson one. So this is Element Bingo. It's a fun, fun game. It's amazing, it's so simple, yet students of all ages really enjoy it.